Hey everybody, how you guys doing? My name is Chris Jester and welcome to All Quiet in the Trenches. Now I am excited about this game. This is a narrative RPG. Essentially kind of get to know your soldiers, build them up, build up the squad camaraderie, and then go into action where that is probably the turn-based uh, aspect of the game. Super excited about it. It has some pretty good reviews on Steam. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get this new game started. Monday, March 1st, 1915, I could still hardly believe that a few days ago, back home, I had been appointed Uta, oh boy, in the charge of his handful of men, and there they were sneaking through the trenches behind me, not a hundred meters from the enemy, positions with heavy packs and dwindling strength. Ka Mecca, smaller than his comrades, seemed pensive but alert. Peter, compact but strong in stature, had already built rapport with uh, the other soldiers through his open and helpful manner. Ferdinand looked small and lost. Casper, person, was slightly stocky, was panting under his heavy pack. Exhausted, we finally found the drought of Lieutenant Vaughn, uh, to whom we had been assigned. Okay, my men are tired. Well, you know what? So wh what are we going to go here? We're going to go good guy or bad guy? Right? Good guy looking after the squad or after some lieutenant's orders. You know what? We're going to look after the squad. My men are tired. And that's what I'm sticking with. My men are tired, I objected. The train broke down. We had to hurry. So what we... Okay. We'll see. We're... So we're going to take care of the squad because it... I care more about what the squad thinks of me because we're going into battle together while this lieutenant's just going to be on his ass sitting in the back. The lieutenant raised his hand. Don't think you'll get away with your lazy excuses with me. I'll have you put that nonsense out of your mind. Oh, cool. So we've already pissed off the lieutenant and we haven't been here five minutes. That's great. All right, so we gotta weigh what we're doing. So obviously this thing down here shows one, our officers and our command essentially on the left here and our soldiers on the right. So here it is, the prestige with your superiors on the left and the mood of your soldiers on the right. So we wanna you know, preferably we're gonna have our soldiers a lot more happy than anything else, but we gotta please us, uh, the superiors sometimes, I get it. Let's go ahead and see what Mr. Peter needs. Someone in the comments below, please tell me how to properly pronounce this word so I don't butcher it, because I know I'm gonna butcher it. But anyways, he says, hello. We have only the rations left that we took with us. Where are we supposed to get something to eat around here? Well, I will tell you where we're supposed to get something to eat around here. All right, so we can assign soldiers to projects on the left, and certain projects have a fixed number of soldiers needed to them, but for other projects, it's up to us as to how many soldiers we actually want to uh, assign to that project, and obviously the more, the higher the impact of the project. All right, we're gonna go ahead and fetch some rations here, and I'm assuming unlimited, so do we just assign anybody? Strain, tired, tired, so we'll send the guy that's obviously strained. Go ahead and send him to get some rations. Hut, hut. Ooh, the bloody, oh, here's the lieutenant we pissed off. Took you long enough. There's no time to get comfortable. Go and gather your men. A communication trench has collapsed and must be rebuilt immediately. You'll have to take care of your supplies yourself. Send somebody to the supply depot for that. Very well. Where is the supply depot? There's always something to dig in the trenches, especially when the enemy artillery gradually renders the old ones unusable. All right, so this is going to be exhausting. We already have men that are bloody tired. You're still getting rations, so we're going to go ahead and add the other three to maintain the trenches. It looks like we have the dugout over here. Rations for the day added. Perfect. Thank you. So that sounds like our day done. Headquarters. Very well, we're gonna go ahead and go next day, then Monday, March 1st, 1915. March 2nd. Oh, here we go, your group's on night watch tonight. Make sure your men don't fall asleep. Thanks, buddy. You guys are great. All right, well, it looks like we've been assigned night watch, which means we need to, oh boy. Who are we going to send? We'll, um, so we'll send uh, Cummerbund because he is completely by the book. Structure gives security, as long as you do what you, uh, the superior says, you can't go wrong. Good, very well, you go for night watch then. Relatively good, we'll put the two young guys there. It looks like the veterans have already, they're somewhat by the book, so they've already got some experience under their belts. They know that they don't need to, to do everything by the book, but I wanna make sure they don't go running off and charging into no man's land during night watch, for God's sakes. 
Wednesday, March 3rd, a few hours ago, a roar of artillery had begun. At first, it was quiet as the rumble of thunder in the distance, but recently it becomes steadily louder and more threatening. Suddenly, there was a thud not 10 meters from the hiding spot where my men were huddled. An artillery shell shredded the dugout on our neighboring troop. Pieces of wood and metal flew for meters, and smoke obscured the view. The noise was deafening for a few seconds, then died away as quickly as it had come. An almost eerie, silent gasp of shock passed. Then my men and I jumped up, pushed aside broken beams, and searched for our buried comrades. We found two for whom all help came too late. A third, however, we could still hear panting. Bloody hell. He was laying with his upper body trapped under fallen beams. His face was distorted with pain, and he was barely conscious. My men stood around him, forlorn, and looked over for me to help. Cumberbund said pleadingly, we must try to help him. Together we lifted the beam from his chest and only saw the next, the full extent, excuse me, of damage. His chest looked crushed and his hips strangely twisted. A long splinter protruded from his abdomen and his shirt soaked in blood. Peterson shook his head. He's beyond help. A mercy killing will save him and us both misery. Ooh. Let's put a swift end to this uh, suffering. So his chest is caved in. He's got a splinter protruding from his frickin' abdomen. His shirt was soaked in blood. Oh, God. Boy, this game really just throws you right into the decisions. Let's go, uh, let's end his suffering. Let us put a swift end to his suffering, I said. I will do it myself. I drew my pistol, which I had received only a few days before. Cold and alien, it lay in my hand. Once more, I exhaled as we had practiced on the parade ground back home. Then, with a single shot, I ended the young soldier's life. Even now, as I write this, the blood curdles in my veins as I feel as if I can still hear the shot in the silence afterwards. Oh, Jesus, all right. Well, I guess that'll just do it for this episode, ladies and gentlemen. What a frickin' what a downer of a thing to do. We hardly have anything left to eat. Someone urgently needs to get supplies from the camp, otherwise we won't have anything by tomorrow. I agree. Well then, for field rations, Go ahead and, you know what, we're going to go ahead and send, uh, no, no, let's go send the two veterans. You know, you guys don't want to do too much. You can go and do that. The advance emplacement has been destroyed by artillery. Now we're missing all well-covered positions there, and the French have an easy way into our trenches. I'm afraid that if we try to rebuild the position directly at the front line, the French will do their best to prevent it. Well, you know what, God bless it. We have the two veterans going, so we'll have the two youngsters do the rebuild encampment. You guys go get your... Go get all the uh, rations that we need for tonight. And who else needs to talk to us? Probably the headquarters. Our lovely lieutenant here. Your artillery must have destroyed one of our telephone lines. Instruct one of your men to carry this message to the command post immediately. It looks like the French are planning an attack, and we urgently need more men. Damn it. All right, well. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. He's highly motivated, though. These guys aren't as motivated, so we're gonna go ahead and send one of these guys. We'll send you, please, to go and send the message to get more men, which means we only have one. Okay, so we'll, we have to do some switching around then. You're not too motivated, so let's go. Who's less motivated? You are. Let's get him off here. You will go help this gentleman, and you, if you're not too motivated, can go get rations and get a little bit of a break from the front line here. And uh, all is final. Nothing else going on. Final. Looks like everything's been done, and we're going on to the next day. So before we do that, Let's go ahead and send all of them over to get rations. See if that changes anything. Everyone's getting rations, that means they aren't going to be... They brought, I mean, hopefully, three times the amount that they would have normally. Four times the amount since four went, but I mean, each man carries three times the amount that he would originally. It was just him. Cover him for a few days now. Alright, for the past day, my man and I have been sitting tightly packed in our bunker while the French artillery rained down a salvo after salvo of death and destruction on us. During the hard work of our first days in the trenches, I had hardly found a quiet minute to have a personal conversation with my men. So now they were sitting next to me, tense and still mostly strangers, 
and I fervently hoped that they would survive the shelling unscathed. The silence between us was in sharp contrast to the constant droning outside. When after hours the firing suddenly stopped, a sigh of relief went through the ranks of some of the young soldiers. However, that was the moment when the veterans of the other troop tensed up and began to load their rifles. A cacophony of whistles snapped us out of the stupor as well. The French were attacking. Here we go. See, the veterans know what's going to happen. Send the, uh, the creeping barrage and then soldiers are always shortly behind. Ugh. With God for Kaiser and Vatalan. Stay together, people. Ooh, stay together. Yes. Stay together. Strength in numbers. Holy shit, look at that freaking artillery right there. Jesus. I think we're ready for, uh, we're ready for battle. Ooh, here we go. Bloody hell. Morale, highly motivated. The enemy has superior numbers. We may have to retreat from these trenches. You and your green horns are to collect and evacuate all the ammunition you can find. If we're to lose this trench, at least we won't lose our equipment. Really? That's what you can have us do? In battle, you lead your soldiers as true. However, you can also give them orders individually unless they have been separated from the group. Very well. All right, so we got to search Alcove. Attentive. In order to be able to react to the threat, one must first perceive the threat. Oh, okay. Well, then we'll send you to search the alcove. Then we'll send you to search this alcove. You know what? Can we send multiple people or only one? Okay, we can only send one at each time. You guys are just providing cover, for God's sakes. Let's go ahead and talk to these guys. Mr. Cummerbund, I was able to find some ammunition. Thank you. How about you? There was still a bit of ammunition and first aid supplies. I took everything I could find. Good bloody work, gentlemen. Good bloody work. All right. We can advance. Tactical movement. Retreat. But where are we trying to go to? We need to get more ammunition. I think we want to do a tactical. And look for the next... Uh, Next area in which we're going to be helping out here. We got cover. No, let's go ahead and retreat back to this way. Yep. Watch out for shots. Watch out for bloody artillery. That landed right next to where I said to go. We got to try and find the rest of the ammunition, but where is that ammunition? Heads down, artillery. Thank you. Good job. Go ahead and fall back there and see if there's any ammunition around here. Shit, that artillery was right on us. Thank God it didn't uh, register with the game, huh? All right, search crates. Go for it. Get those crates searched. Let's hopefully we find the rest of the ammunition. So far this game, <laughs> this is a pretty bitching game. I really like it. Soldiers, we are falling back. Retreat to the next defensive line. Very well. Retreat across the creek. Okay, what did you find? There was still a bit of ammunition, first aid, you took everything. Oh, same thing. Same bloody thing, huh? All right, where are we going? Looks like we're going right over there. Very low danger, even. There's the French right there. Task complete, collect ammunition and equipment. Perfect, thank you. Ah, the scarecrow will scare him away. Perfect. That should be enough, right? We've collected quite a lot now and can't carry much more. Well, it bloody better be all right. Damned artillery! Cumberbund must have taken a hit. Where the hell is he? Oh, God bless it. Are you providing? Yes, he is. We should provide cover fire so our comrades can retreat. Well, very well. Let's do uh, suppress cover fire. Everyone's ready. You guys have yours ready to rock and roll. Boom. Cover fire. Yes, put your rifle right in his bloody neck. Shoot your own guy, for God's sakes. There we go. Everybody else, react. Cover fire, cover fire. Yeah, you fired two shots. It's hardly suppressive fire. That was pretty close. The shot hit right next to me. My heart is beating like crazy. No, your other friend said that. Bleeding is almost stopped. I won't need much longer. Awesome. Keep suppressing, keep suppressing. Is there a lot? Yeah, there's still quite a lot. Looks like we already downed one of them. Got shot, maybe. 
Oh, within melee range. Boy, it's like danger, danger close right now. I was able to stop the bleeding. Someone should take him to the stretcher bearer so that he can be, uh, okay, go to the field hospital. I get that. The wound hurts so much I can hardly move. Well, let's get you. The field stretcher, wherever the hell that is. I have no idea. We're going to go ahead and retreat. Be on the line. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Get everybody. Oh, God. Oh, God. What about him? Was I supposed to hit him specifically, or do we carry him? I'm assuming he fled to the mark. Is there all the enemy? No, there he is right there. What happened? Okay. I don't know what happened there. I thought we were good. Go ahead and retreat and keep retreating. Let's flee to military hospital, so I'm assuming he went to the military hospital. Retreat across the creek. Perfect. Well, I guess we're going to the next level now. Did that guy get to the field hospital? I mean, he was locked. Couldn't do anything. That suppressive fire was weak. I was expecting, like, the Mad Minute with their uh, bolt-action rifles, not just two shots. Saturday, March 6th, the explosions. Gunshots and screams still echoed in my ears. We'd only been fighting for a few minutes, and yet it felt as if years had passed since this morning and the everyday life back home a lifetime away. To be at camp now, safely far behind the front, was surreal. The lighthearted chirping of the birds almost drowned out by the dull rumble of the front and the cries of pain from the field. Ah, so we did take Mr. Cummerbunt there, so... Perfect. That's exactly what I wanted to know. My people lay down exhausted on the grass, surrounded by the boxes of ammunition and equipment we had saved. Dirty and bloodied, some still pale and trembling, but soon an anchor. There's the lieutenant. In the distance, abruptly broke the supposed peace, even before we could see him coming towards us amidst the tents. On your feet, man. Ah, uh, man, you relax. I'll talk to this bloody lieutenant. I greeted him uncertainly. The lieutenant looked down contemptuously at my people, most of whom were still sitting or lying on the ground, but seeing an ample supply of ammunition seemed to appease him. Good. Good job. All right, Mr. Cumberbutt, have fun. You guys get some rest. It looks like we need to go and chit-chat, though. Field hospital. There he is. Oh, there's the nurse. Ah, you're Cumberbutt's officer. I'm Sister Elizabeth Ritter. I organized our small field hospital here. Don't worry. He is doing pretty well. He will soon recover from his wound. Nice. I'm honestly glad you were overwhelmed so quickly. The shorter the skirmish, the fewer dead and wounded. Huh. Well, all right. Defeat is good. As far as I'm concerned, yes, the lieutenant can now throw a fit about losing the trench line all he wants, but I'm content not being overburdened and nobody dying under my care just because we don't have enough time for proper treatment. <laughs> Reformen! Heresy! Uh, no, I agree with her. I'm glad you see it that way, too. There are some people in this camp who believe that war is decided right here. Complete nonsense. They want me to fame and glory as a nurse. I know there's only agony and death to be won here. Well, yeah, yeah. she's not wrong. All right, guys, she's not wrong. All right, uh, set up camp. You guys are setting up camp. Go ahead and check the tent camp. Anyone to talk to over here? No, huh? Field kitchen. All right, so this is our cook. He's afraid he can't cook anything for us right now, but that's because the squad hasn't been allocated supplies yet. Lovely, better contact. Uh, Hennick, he is responsible for your supplies. Very well. Where's Mr. Hennick? So I can get my men some supplies urgently. There's Mr. Hennick. Request additional provisions, offer help, ask for favor, next shipment. You're the new group's uh, officer, right? All right, Mr. Hennick, responsible for supplying the troops. I'll allocate some supplies to your group immediately. This should last you until the next supply shipment. Sweet. Talk to me if you need anything. Here's to good cooperation. All right, well then, let's get on his good side first and offer him help before we ask for favors. Glad you asked. The artillery is using a lot of ammunition these days. My people have already complained that they can hardly keep up. There's no harm in having more helpers to load the cart. I'll take as many as you can spare, except. All right, well then we're gonna go ahead and leave and we need to go and unload the carts. Look, gentlemen, I bloody helped you guys out big time. 
hooked you up, so you're going to put in the work and go help. Wonderful, I just got the delivery from the lieutenant. What size ration should I give your people? If you want to do something good for them, then I would suggest double rations. Just talk to me whenever you want to change your troop rations. Maintain rations, double rations. Any military guy knows that food is money. You'd happily give your whole paycheck away for a damn good meal. So we're going to go ahead and do double rations. I will serve men double rations from now on. Thank you. Hell yeah. Hooking these guys up so they can put in the work. Mold everywhere, Zelensky commented as he held out an exemplary loaf of bread covered in green stains to me. I'll have to throw it away. I lowered my gaze anxiously to the baskets of baked goods at his feet. The warehouse was still well stocked for the moment. See, that's why I did double rations. So you get rid of this shit. It's gonna mold. Uh, get rid of it. Better safe than sorry. Save what we can. Hmm. We'll save what can be saved. Yeah, we don't need to... Th Just because there's a little mold, we can pick that off. Save what can be saved, I urge. Cut away the mold. We'll yeah, exactly. Just cut away the mold. Uh, Zelensky was horrified. That's dangerous. I can't condone it. All right, then get rid of it. Hmm. You know what? My order, my responsibility. Yeah, I completely agree. My order is my responsibility. I looked at him, prompting him to follow my orders. He looked disgustedly at my... Oh my gosh, at the loaf of bread in his hand at the moment, but then nodded reluctantly and set to work. L Listen, it's not going to kill the guys if you cut away the mold. I mean... There we go. Oh, look at the happiness now. They... Uh, look, at he's even got a little smile on his face. Good weather at it. He's, he's happy. Good weather. Oh, man. These guys are loving life. Wellinger. I don't think we've met, sir. Profession, you are a farmer. Do I know you? Ah, uh, perfect weather for this little camping trip, isn't it? Aha! Uh -huh. I'm Franz Wellinger, your new man. I hope not all the French girls in the village are already taken, or at least they're willing to make an exception for me. Ha! Huh. All right, easy there, Wellinger. Keep, your, keep it in your pants, buddy. Impose, <laughs> impose punishment, like grant reward personal issues. Latrine duty for your... For heaven's sake, what did I do wrong? I'm not, nothing, buddy. Grant reward. Reward? That would be nice. Yes. What were you thinking? Personal issues. What do you want to know, Eric? Uh, let's go ahead and hear about your origin. I come from a farm near Gotha. I used to roam around a lot. I was with the animals in the fields. Okay, and hey, I was completely free. How about your family? Ah, yes, there are many of us. When all the Wellingers are at the farmstead, it's busier than here. Yeah, very well. Get over to headquarters. Ah, uh, bloody hell. Not the lieutenant. Not the lieutenant! These villagers are suspect. I keep hearing stories of attacks. Oh my goodness. Organize some patrols through the village and uh, show the French who's in control here so they don't get any foolish ideas. All right, we're going to ask him for more work. How unexpectedly eager are you trying to get suck up to me? Oh, get the hell out of here. Perhaps I'll overlook your previous mistakes if you allocate some men for the uh, entrenchment efforts. The more, the better. All right, you know what? Go ahead and accept. Don't disappoint me. Maybe I'll uh, make... Okay, well, very well. All right, so we've got... Control the village. We'll send... Uh, go ahead and send the two... Two veterans, because they're going to know if something's awry. And we'll send uh, the remaining... To go help in the trenches. Thank you. Who's next to talk to? Bonjour! Are you uh, the officer who's pitched their tents right at the camp entrance? Yes, my name is uh, Marianne. And I am the village elders of the community. Since I can speak German, I try my best to mediate between the residents of the village and the soldiers here at the camp. Very lovely. If you're in urgent need, we can share with you. I hope you won't forget our willingness to help, Monsieur. Huh? Well, they did say we were kind of low. I will collect food from the villagers from you. Send one of your men over to pick them up later. Very well. March 25th, a soldier was just coming back into the camp with a stock of freshly chopped wood when I heard the young soldier Wellinger quipping. It's a pity we're not home. I know where we could get some, uh, find some stacks at Lots Farmer Schmanky's daughter. She's, uh, Jesus Christ, dude. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. I could imagine the accompanying gesture. I joined the merry group. I, rep <laughs> I reprimanded, uh, this, all this freaking reprimanding. I let the soldiers have their fun. Uh, let the soldiers have their fun. Keep morale high. I would not participate in this kind of soldier humor, but saw no reason to prohibit the men's people's fun. 
As I walked past the group of men, the soldiers satisfied a laugh as they greeted me in view of their still visible joy. So he walked past, or I walked past, and it looks like it. All right, so it looks like Wellinger approved. Or we've set up camp. Mr. Cumberbutt is still in the hospital doing nothing. We'll be treated medically. Yes, well, get out here and bloody help us. Finally, it took you long enough. The Major ordered the start of the offensive this morning. Unfortunately, we didn't get a chance to win fame and honor just yet. We're in reserve for the time being. Make sure your men are ready to move out at all times. After all, we don't want to disappoint the Major once it's finally our turn. I agree. Uh, ask for more work. How unexpectedly eager are you trying to suck up to me? Fine, blah, 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 blah. This is the same thing you just said. We have a few prisoners of war in our camp that need guarding until they can be moved to a prison. Until then, it will be your responsibility. Ah. Okay. Guard captives, you know what? We're gonna go ahead and we're gonna have the, again, the, we'll have one vet. And is this Minka? There we go, son. You get to watch them and uh, make sure everything is good to go. Meanwhile, with trenches, we'll send the other two. Go help with some trench work. You have a minute. We need help with something here in the hospital. Oh, good God. Thank you for taking time, sir. Sister Elizabeth seemed tense, even though the field hospital did not seem crowded at all. Please follow me. She motioned and led me past the hospital towards a barren patch of land with a series of shallow ditches dug in a line. I've heard there's a new offensive coming. She paused and turned towards me with dire seriousness in her eyes and pointed towards the graves. We're going to need a lot more of those. Do you think you could spare some of your men to dig more of them? Um... You know what? Unfortunately, we can't do that right now. Of course, we'll help out. I'll see what I can do. Uh, we're not going to be able to because we need to work on the trenches and we have the, the soldiers. Okay, well, we pissed her off. And here's our freaking rations, man. Rats everywhere! They're devouring our food sacks. We have to do something. I'm currently serving the man. Regulation... Da -da -da -da. Well... Your men are exhausted. With your permission, I would like to give them larger portions to get them back into shape. Oh, okay. Let's double ration them. Hell yeah. I would love that. Pest control. Oh my gosh. We don't have the ability to do any of this. Shit. Alright, we're going to piss off the lieutenant. And we're going to go kill the rats. The, the ability to have our rations. A hungry soldier is no good. The latrine is filled to the brim. Someone should take care of that before it overflows. Bloody hell, they've given us all these uh, things that we gotta do and we only have four people. We need two people for rat control. Prevents loss of food. We have latrine duty, but we have guard captives. We can't We can't do any of that. We can't empty the bloody latrine right now. That's gonna have to wait. B dig another latrine, all right, guys? Your unit is tasked with guard duty. Appoint two men to patrol the boundaries of our camp. Very well. Guard duty. Uh, <laughs> let's get the... Oh, hello. Well rested. If you're well rested, you can do guard duty then. And here come all the other tasks. For the most part, we were able to defend our food stacks, but the rats keep coming. Well, that's not bloody good. Oh, we're still doing pest control? Are you kidding me? Our supplies are running low. I would give your men more, but as long as supply ration remains uncertain, I will only serve standard rations. And maybe we should think about giving even less so we can make our stock last longer. You know, you keep saying double rations, no rations. Double rations, no rations. Which one is it? And latrine duty. Ah! Let's go ahead and... Okay, we're going to spend the day... We're going to empty out the latrine right now. There's a pub in the village. Menke and I would like to visit with your permission. Um, no. Too much stuff going on. The latrine is overflowing and the smell is repugnant. Please order someone to take care of it. <laughs> well, that person is you, buddy. You, uh, you bloody got A certain number of soldiers are required for a project. Either more soldiers must be added to the project or the soldiers must be withdrawn. Oh, okay. Pest control, pest control. Is that more important than latrine? Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Okay. Maintain those rations. All right, get you in there and you in there. And then we'll do latrine next. Okay, I didn't know we were going to go like four days. 
Maybe the latrine was a little too much now. We might, uh, we might have some people upset that they're laying in literal poo. One even, Manke was sitting in front of his tent, polishing his boots with dedication. Penderson came up and quietly watched for a bit before asking, why do you even bother? They'll just get dirty again. Manke frowned, so do clothes and homes, and still you clean those, don't you? Penderson shrugged, but those don't get dirty every other step. Our boots do, especially in his mind, okay? Penderson rolled his eyes dismissively and then blah, 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 blah. So yes, we want to make sure we look good at all times. We're soldiers, come on now. Clean your boots, clean your boots. You know what, yeah. Oh, I, that was totally the wrong one. Damn it. Go with your general cleanliness. Suit yourself. Okay, Benderson relaxed and was being gave me a grateful nod. Manky cast a hostile glance, but remained quiet. And Ah, I didn't mean... I was on your side, Manky. I was on your side. I clicked the wrong bloody thing. Oh, well. Can't go back now. It is what it is. This is where I'll just go back to my tent and go, Damn it! What were you, what were you thinking? Wellinger came hurriedly towards me, clearly upset and with bloodstained uniform. Have you seen the sorry state of the field hospital, he asked visibly. I just helped carry one of our wounded who couldn't make it on his own. The injured are everywhere and the beds are overflowing. Uh, okay. I'd known with the intense fighting that uh, in the few days that a lot of injured were passing through a camp, but to think that the state of the field hospital had already gotten so bad, is there anything to be done? The soldier pleaded with me. Um, I'll look into it. All right, let's offer assistance. Of course, your man would be a great help. Uh, as many of you as you can spare. Thank you. Send them in to me and I'll instruct them. All right, let's just see what the hell we're doing first. We need latrine duty. I think I've gotten rid of the rats. I haven't seen any since the... Okay, cool. The food stocks are finally safe again. Yes. Good, 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 good. Flies running row. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and... Oops. We're going to go ahead and... Oh! Oh! All right, well, let's go ahead and meager rations for right now. Piss them off. And the field laundry can't keep up with the demand. To relieve them, your unit will be responsible for keeping their uniforms clean by themselves. Remember that an army standard are to be upheld nonetheless. Blah, 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 who cares? The officers are dissatisfied with me because now even the quality of their rations is suffering from the current supply. I have uh, suggestions how the both of us could help each other. Okay, are you interested? Trade provisions, okay. If you give me some of your canned meat and have a man move all of it, I will give you a bigger bread ration for your people in return, and this will make the, your rations more boring. You will end up with uh, significantly more daily rations than before. Do we have a deal? Um, sure. That sounds good. We have three people that we can actually do stuff with. The latrine is overflowing and the smell is repugnant. Please order someone to take care of it. That's going to be you, sir. All right, perfect. We can do all of this at once. So, latrine duty. Let's go ahead and send you. Oh, we can do four. Perfect. We got laundry duty. We'll send... Uh, you're going to go and assist because you're young. You can do that. You can go and do the laundry. And you can go ahead and trade provisions. Look at that. All of it taken care of at once. Hell yes. After the deal with the uh, field lieutenant, Zelensky could only give out extremely small portions of meat while the rations were being distributed. Some of the men grumbled discontent. Okay, all right. And you know what? If I tell them what we did, they might be like, oh, so officers are better than us. I ignore the disconnect, whether they understood or not. The trade with had not been in their best interest. Okay. Well, you know what? At least the poo's being cleaned up. Well, we're on the next day. I don't know how long we're going to be here until we get to the front, but you know what? Not bad overall. I really like the uh, I like the art of the game, the quality of the game, and I like the click and playthrough. Really enjoying that aspect of this RPG. But in the meantime, that is going to do it for this, ladies and gentlemen. If you enjoyed it, please comment down below. Let me know what you guys thought. Likewise, hit that subscribe button if you want to see more on this video and others like it. And if you enjoyed the video, please hit that like button as it helps get this video out to many more so they can see it. Uh, I'm going to get back at it and start working on the next video. And until then, I hope you all have an incredible day. Take it easy, okay?